Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So this morning, once again, I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hey, those on the internet, those on the, who would come on the archives, on the, on, the, on the YouTube channel, and those who are on Facebook, God bless you this morning. Amen. In this time of trial, in this time of darkness, in the time of a squeeze, in the time of peril. Amen. It's so good that we could come together to worship the Lord, to praise the Lord, to give Him glory, to give Him honor, and to give Him thanksgiving. Praise God. Hallelujah. So this morning, we like to turn to four portions of scripture this morning. In the book of St. Luke chapter 21. The book of St. Luke chapter 21. Reading from verse 20 to 24. The book of St. Luke chapter 21. Reading from verse 20 to 24. And then Ezekiel 9. Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 1 to 6. <coughs> Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 1 to 6. Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 1 to 6. And then the book of Revelation Two portions in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 7, 1 to 4. Revelation chapter 7, 1 to 4. And then Revelation chapter 13, 11 to 8, 18. Revelation chapter 13, <coughs> 11 to 18. So let's turn to the book of St. Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 24. St. <coughs> Luke chapter 21, verse 20. This is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. If you have a red letter Bible, you can see it is the Lord speaking. And when he shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation therefore is near. Nigh. And let them which are in the Judea flee to the mountains, and there let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the counties enter therein. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Amen. And if you look, read from 25 to 28, talk about the moon and the stars and man had feeling for fear. And then they'll see that, well, you know, let's just read it. <clears throat> uh, verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sky, in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, man's heart said, Oh my, is there going to be an ex variant? Is it going to be worse? What is going to happen to us? The vaccines, uh, the, the injections not working. Amen. Man's heart failing for fear for things that are coming upon the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption. Draw it near. Amen. Let's, let's turn to the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel chapter 9. Reading from verse 1 to 6. <clears throat> he cried also in mine ears with a loud voice saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near. Even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth towards the north, and every man his slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside, <coughs> and beside the brazen altar. So if we read and write, there were six men with slaughtering weapons in their hand, and a seventh man, with an inkhorn rider. Amen. Which we know is the seventh angel. The seventh seal. Angel of the covenant. <clears throat> Amen. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub. Whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen. Which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him. Go through the midst of the city. Through the midst of Jerusalem. And set a mark upon the foreheads of men that sigh. And that cry for all the abominations that be done 
in the midst thereof. And um, just verse 6. And to others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spear, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly the old and the young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the house, the, at the ancient men which were before the house. So the judgment become, comes at the, from the house of the Lord first. And then we look at Revelation. <clears throat> we like to read from Revelation chapter 7, <clears throat> verse 1 to 4. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on the tree. And we know winds are what? War. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice, as a voice to the four angels, to whom he was given to hurt the sea and the, and the earth, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And you know, the Gentiles are not the servants. The Gentiles are his members of his bride and his church. The Jews, the Israelites, the Israel are his servants. Amen. And if you read on, you'll find where there was 144,000 that were sealed. And let's turn to Revelation chapter 13. We want to read from verse 11, verse 11 to 18. And this is happening today in our lives. Amen. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. Amen. No, he didn't come out of water. Water and sea means a lot of people. But I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like an alarm. And he spake as a dragon. This is America now. And this is the bison or the buffalo. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. And causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast. Whose deadly wound was healed. And he doth great wonders. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of these miracles which he had power to do. The, in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth. That they should make an image to the beast. And which had a womb by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark. Amen? A mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. That, that, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that had understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. Which is six hundred and sixty six. And if you watch closely, amen. <clears throat> this is the Antichrist we're talking about. This is the beast. And we identify it in all our other messages. That this is the Roman Catholic Church rising up. Hallelujah. It was uh, First it was Rome that killed the Lord Jesus. But then Rome was slain. Amen. And ecclesiastical Rome became, became papal Rome. So that's where they revive in a spiritual aspect. We're going to talk about it in a little bit. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Shall we pray? Father God. Uh, this morning we have read your word, Lord, and your word is forever settled in heaven, Lord. Oh God, now, Lord, we ask, Lord, that, that you know, anyone could take up this Bible, and it, this Bible is written in so many different languages, and <clears throat> they could take up this Bible and they could read the word. Anybody with our understanding could read the word and have an intellectual understanding. But Lord God, we need to get into your spirit. We need your spirit, who is the author of this word, to come forth out of this word and reveal this word unto us, Lord. We have read these scriptures, Lord. We talk about the beast. We talk about the sealing angel. We talk about Ezekiel. We talk about, about Jerusalem and compass with armies and all this stuff. Lord, make it real to your people. May they understand. Lord, and the, the things that I'm going to say today, Lord, and the taper, the audio taper, just let it, let the people be, and it was not so good, Lord, tape, but let the people hear it, Lord God, I pray. Father God, help us this morning, touch our bodies as we sit to listen. We sat down, we worship, 
We look on the face of our precious and loving Lord Jesus and we say we love you, we praise you, we sing songs of Zion unto you, we bless your holy name. No, great eternal spirit, come down Lord and quicken this word unto your people. Move me out of the way Lord, I'm a nothing and a nobody, unprofitable servant. Lord, full of uh, faults and mistakes and <clears throat> body aches and God, truth and cough and all this stuff. But you, eternal spirit, Lord, use me according to your divine will. Your people are hungry this morning. I am hungry. I need to hear what you have to say, Lord. Oh, Father, Lord Jesus, so now I lay myself before you. Bless your people, bless the pastors, the believers. Touch them in all, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And amen, amen. So this morning for our title, Sirs, what time is it? Sirs, what time is it? In other words, what is happening? And our subject has always been the Lord Jesus Christ. A subject is always the Lord Jesus Christ. And a subject is, <coughs> Watchman, what of the night? Jesus is coming. And judgment to follow. Watchman. Watchman, I know the watchman is the Holy Ghost. Watchman, Holy Spirit of God. What of the night? Jesus is coming. And judgment is to follow. Watchman. And what is our inspiration? What is causing us to look into this this, uh, this topic this morning and to read the scriptures and to try to identify what God is telling us and try to catch a revelation of what he's telling us this morning. Our inspiration is, sirs, what time are we living in as we see prophecy taking place all around us? Sirs, what time are we living in as we see prophecy taking place all around us? That's our inspiration. We look around us. There's prophecy every direction. And most of all this morning, there's a great prophecy in Revelation chapter 13. <coughs> Rev 1 to, um, Rev 11 to 18 taking place right in front of us. It is undisputed, brother and sister. Undisputed. Never in the history of the world has this happened since the time when the Bible was first written. Never in the history of the world. Sure, we had the, 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 the Spanish flu, yes. And uh, they, were, they told you do this and told you do that. But never in the world, never has it happened that this lockdown, this, the, the, all these things have taken place. Never. Not only that. Amen. There's a first injection. Then the second injection. Then there's a third. Then there's going to be a fourth. And there's going to be a fifth. And there's going to be a fifth. Nobody knows. Amen. They're experimenting. They're trying. They don't know what's going on. And what I'm saying is the truth. Hallelujah. So what is happening all around us, brother and sister? Amen. What is happening around us is that prophecy is being fulfilled this morning. Hallelujah. Prophecy is being fulfilled. Now I want to play a, a, a portion of a, of a tape for you here this morning. Amen. <clears throat> I'm playing a portion of a tape this morning <clears throat> that I was studying and the Holy Spirit brought back my attention to this was January. Let's watch the date. January 27th. 2018 January 27th 2018 and this was prophecy amen that was spoken hallelujah now watch the dates amen it is 2018 hallelujah glory to God so watch the dates hallelujah amen now I'm praying this morning that you are able to hear the audio I really tried it last night and or this morning and it seemed to be working fine. It might be about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or maybe less. I, I didn't count it. Uh, <clears throat> it's uh, uh, 3 and 1 is 4. About 15 minutes. Uh, but there are a lot more. But I want you to understand and catch the gist, the gist of what was said. What God had me spoke out that in, around that time in prophecy. And brother and sister, this prophecy has come to pass today. And um, yeah, last year, 2020 and 2021, this prophecy has come to pass. Amen. Now you say, Brother Sipasad, why are you showing me this? God vindicates His word by bringing it to pass. In other words, <clears throat> He would say something. It may go on for years. It may go on for a whole, whole, whole long. Amen. But when He brings it to pass, He points you back and says, Listen, there is where I said it. You see? I told you back then to get ready. I told you back then what to do. I told you back then and to get ready. You got to believe my word, Jesus says. God says, believe my word. When you hear prophecy, you may not fully understand it. 
<coughs> when you hear prophecy, you may not uh, see it taking place right away. But oh, hallelujah. Amen. Though the vision tarry, yet it will come. Hear this word. It, I mean, it is striking. If you take this in a spiritual aspect, forget the person who spoke it. No, it's not me. It was the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen closely, brother and sister. I'm praying that you could, you could, you could uh, catch, you could catch the sound as we we play it. If not, I may have to put it on the website or somewhere for you to for you to hear it better. Amen. But listen closely, and uh, we're going to try our best for you to hear this o- this audio. It's an audio. We didn't have video in those days, and this was January twenty seventh, twenty. 18. Listen, it's so important, brother and sister. Here we go. Let's see if we could get it. Uh, let's see if we could get it to play. Um, it's here. It's here. Blessed be the name of. I didn't plug it in here. Bear with me one second, brother and sister. We're gonna get it in. Praise God. I forgot to plug it in. Praise God. Here we go. Hallelujah. Okay. believe that if we use the same words, if we use the same quotes, God is obligated according to his word to bring forth that same manifestation, to bring forth the pillar fire among the people. And you who are the internet, be not afraid that a pillar fire could visit you, the angel of God could visit you and change you and transform you and give you the desires of your heart this morning and those who are here. The same pillar fire could appear and circle in this room. We are in the supernatural realm this morning. We are here. Amen. The angels descending bring forth above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. Amen. The Holy Ghost is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The pillar of fire is here. The angels of God are here to quicken you, to heal you, to bring you to the Master's feet. Amen. In worship and praise and glory and honor. Amen. Praise God. So today, the, my topic may seem a little, uh, it might seem scary. Make this. January Escape quickly. Yeah. What am I saying here this morning? I'm saying there are signs around us. I want to type this morning, just as Jesus spoke in St. Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 24, and he was telling the disciples of a physical thing that was going to take place, of something that was going to happen when the armies were going to surround Jerusalem. He told them to get out and get out quickly. Amen. Now he said, that he didn't say first time or second, he just said, from the moment you see that, get out and get out quickly. And I want to type that this morning. Amen. To the day and the time that we're living in. Amen. We have seen prophecies. There are 13 prophecies that Brother Branham laid out. Amen. 13 that I found. There are probably more. 13 prophecies that identified a great woman ruler is going to come in this country. He is said that she is going to be president. Amen. And we've seen right now. Hallelujah. We have a, we have a, we have a current president that is for going to supposedly be four years. It may not be four years. You never know what they might do in two years. Amen. But we are seeing the prophecy of William Marion Branham, Brother Branham, saying there's going to be a woman president before the consummation. That is God said a lot. He said if that does happen, he's a false prophet. Brother Branham spoke it. We have seen six or seven, six things that he has spoken in 1933 that has taken place. And I don't have the time to go in and, if you are going and uh, explain it to you, but if you go back to some of my messages, you see where I spoke about these seven these prophecies and I spoke about time is no longer things like that if you go back to my archive messages I've left it on the website so that you could understand what is taking place now today in a maybe an hour hour and 50 minutes I'm not able 15 minutes not able to give you the details of all the things but I'm going to show you one thing that I believe this morning that has tight us when tight or oh, not sorry, Vespasian, Vespasian was first Roman general era. that surround uh, that that had three he had three armies in three different directions around Jerusalem and he was about to take Jerusalem. He was about to attack Jerusalem and this was in AD sixty eight. Now if you notice AD sixty eight and eight and when was this message preached? 2018, uh, 8, okay? Amen. AD 68, there's an 8. AD 68, he was about, 
what happened eh, down in the room there was a new emperor and the emperor died so Vespasian had to run now Vespasian was there with his son Titus and another general by the name of um, I forget, I'm trying to get his name whatever his name is and uh, but the next general was Titus that was his son Vespasian's son so Vespasian pulled out his army and Vespasian went back to Rome Amen but you know what happened? the Christians according to Josephus Josephus was an historian and he wrote what happened when that took place the all the Christian believers got out of Jerusalem because they believed the word of the prophet Messiah Jesus Christ they got out to Jerusalem and not one of them died what happened next? in AD 70 Vespasian became in AD 69 Vespasian became the emperor of Rome he became the Caesar and what happened? Titus came back to Jerusalem and in AD 60 in somewhere in January or February he encompassed Jerusalem this is so important for you to hear no, that was AD 70. I, I said 60, but it's AD 70 he came back. Now notice, a zero. Amen? A zero. Amen. He encompassed Jerusalem around January or February. And by the time of November, December, by, the, by that time, September, November, December, uh, September, October, that last three months, they wiped out Jerusalem completely. They killed every single one person that was in Jerusalem. The, the history books tells you that the blood flowed out of the, the gates as almost as high as the horse's bridle. Amen. So today I want to type that and show you according to the quotes by, by, by Brother Branham. You know what, uh, what is taking place. And if you, and if you want to go to a website called Livius, dot org. It will tell you about the Jewish war from A, from AD sixty six to in AD seventy. What happened? Why the war started in sixty six when Nero needed money, and then what happened with uh, with Vespasian? Vespasian, what he came and what he did, Amen. And then how Vespasian became the emperor, Amen. And how Titus came in AD seventy and destroyed Jerusalem. So there you'll find the history information. Now if you notice, the war really started around, not Jerusalem itself, but in Israel in 66. In 66. And what happened? 2016 election. What happened? 2018. Is this message was preached. And what happened? 2020. What happened in 2020? Listen. So it's not something I'm making up. It's not something that Brother Branham made up. Not something he's thinking about. But it's something that real that took place. The army surrounded Jerusalem the first time. Now let's 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 read some quotes and then and then we're gonna talk about what what it is. We're gonna take what happened then and we're gonna take what's taking place now and we're gonna type it together. No, brother and sister, I'm just making a type so you could understand that you need to make haste. Escape quickly. And what is the escape? The escape is this message of William Marion Branham. This escape is the revelation of coming to a statue of a perfect man. This escape is seven thunders give faith for rapture and gay, gay, uh, grace. Amen. Seven thunders give, uh, is the bride's revival. Seven thunders will show you how to prepare for great translation faith. It's in the way this morning. Amen. Escape. Escape quickly. And I didn't even know that Brother Branham preached a message. Brother Branham preached a message. He said, uh, let me just see if I could find the name of it. It was very, 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 very strange that while I was studying, I didn't know the title of this message that Brother Branham was saying. So I'm, I'm saying this morning, we are led of the Holy Spirit. We are right on course this morning. Amen. My message, make haste. Escape thither. Amen. And here's what Brother Branham had a message. 1958, April 2nd, 1958, in Waterloo. Amen. Here he says, escape hither, come quickly. A message by the prophet that I didn't even know he preached. And it was a Sunday morning. 
Waterloo. And you know what they say about Lord Waterloo? Waterloo is where Napoleon came to his Waterloo where he lost his battle. Amen? So, so, escape, make his escape. So the escape is in Christ Jesus. The escape is in the message of the, uh, the prophet William Marion Barnum. You need to understand. You need to read the message. You need to hear the tapes. You need to compare to the Bible. Do not let the things of the world take a hold of you. Do not let the, tr the, 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 the things of, of this earth and the cares of this world take a hold of you. Amen. Put this as your uttermost priority. priority. Make his escape quickly. For the time is at hand. Amen. Look along. We are surrounded by armies. There's a law right now. Escape. Make his escape quickly. There's a law right now. Vespasian has pulled out and gone back to Rome. Amen. We have a president now. And it's not a woman president. But she is coming. That woman president is coming. And that thus said the Lord by the prophet. Amen. And when is the next election? 2020. But could it be before my brothers and my sisters? Could it happen before? It's coming. It's coming. Uh, Titus is coming back. Amen. Rome is going to encircle the church once more. Now is the time. Two years we have. According to uh, the prophecy that Jesus gave them. According to the AD 68. Amen. To AD 70. Two years. Amen. Two years. That the, that the bride that was there, the apostles, the Christians got out of Jerusalem two years, amen, before Titus, the son of Aspasian, came back and killed every one of them. Now you say, Brother Sipasad, why did he kill every one of them? Why didn't they take prisoners? Well, they took a few prisoners, but everybody else they killed. Man, woman, child, they killed them all. Now you say, Brother Sipasad, well, that's cruel. Why did they do it? Well, I want to draw your reference to two important things that happened. When Jesus Christ, three important things. When three Jesus Christ was crucified, Hallelujah. was about to be crucified in front of Pontius Pilate, what did the Jews say? Did you say, crucify him, his blood be upon us and our children? Amen? Amen? That's number one. Number two is when Christ was on the cross. He knew what he did. That was his children. Amen? He knew what he did. So what happened? What did Jesus said? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They do. Now they had a space of time for forgiveness from the crucifixion of Jesus to 50 days to Pentecost. They had an opportunity to come to Christ and ask for forgiveness so that they could receive the Holy Ghost. But what happened when uh, uh, on the day of Pentecost, 120 were in the upper room and they received the Holy Ghost and they came down and were running through the streets. You know what the, the Jews said? Oh, they drunk. They're drunk with, with wine and things. They, they, they're stupid people. They don't know what you're doing. They refuse to for, ask for forgiveness. So God cannot forgive unless he, you ask for forgiveness. So I don't care what anybody says. There's no, there's no forgiveness unless you repent. you got to repent. No forgiveness unless you repent. Amen. So God did not forgive them. So judgment came upon them in the form of Vespasian and Titus. And Titus wiped and killed them all out. They all died. Amen. They all, amen. His children that they were disobedient, he, they were all slain. So now we are seeing there is this opportunity. So are we, are we seeing this? Is there opportunity from this time when we saw, remember in 2016, 2016, we all were saying to us it seems that we all were encompassed with the armies. You know, the armies were all around us. We felt we were time that we should be making the rapture because a woman president was supposed to come. Yes. Prophesied by Brother William Aaron Branham. Prophesied by many dignitaries too that a woman president was supposed to come. It didn't happen. So what is that type? Vespasian pulled back. Rome pulled back. Now this woman president is going to be Roman. Going to be influenced by the Roman Catholic Church. It's going to be Revelation chapter 13. A beast. Like a, a lamb that speaks like a dragon. Amen. Revelation 13, read your Bible, you'll see it. So Vespasian, Vespasian, who is Rome, pull back. So Rome, pull back. And in the White House, we have a evangelical type president. This is 2018. So a Protestant type president. So Rome, what? 
for the back. For how long? Could it be two years, my brothers and my sisters? Amen. Could it be two years? Prophecy. Now, Rome pulled back in when? 68 AD. When did Rome pull back with us? We're talking today, 2018 AD. We are in that time. And when did, when did Rome come back? With Titus? 70 AD. When could Rome come back? Take over the White House. Take over this whole America. When? Could it be 2020? Amen. Prophecy, Could it be? Brothers and sisters. In the new election. Could it be before that? Could it be before that? We don't know time. The Bible says we don't know the day or the hour when he is going to come. But we will see the time and the season that is taking place. I don't mean to have so much explanation, but I want you to understand. Now I'll have to really bypass a lot of the quotes. But I want you to understand the seriousness of the Jews. What happened to them at when, when, when Vespasian came and circled Jerusalem from three directions. Amen. He was about to take, he was about to take Jerusalem, and the news came back, and I could just read a little history report if I have it here, do I have it here, a little history report, um, he got, he got, uh, um, the, he got news, he said he was about, he was about to, oh, uh, here, so, there's a history report, um, I can't find it right now. Now here it is. Uh, now J J J Vespasian, having achieved control of Galilee, the coastal region, and the Jordan Valley, Vespasian could have attacked Jerusalem from three sides. At that moment, however, a messenger brought remarkable news came from Italy. Nero had committed suicide, and a senator, a senator named Galba, was the new ruler of the Roman Empire. Vespasian immediately sent his son Titus to Rome to congratulate the new emperor before he had reached Greece. But before he had reached Greece, he learned that Galba had been lynched by his own guard. Two new pretenders, Vitellius and Otto, were engaged in, in a civil war. And then finally, of course, Vespasian himself proclaimed emperor, claiming that he wanted to avenge Galba. Amen? So Vespasian became the emperor. And his son Titus came back in 87. Let's read some quotes. So I'm going to have to go through these quotes pretty quickly. And I hope that the Lord is able to put them together for you. So you can understand what we're saying. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So brother and sister. That is. Uh, brother and sister. That is prophecy. Listen when it just, this was preached. This was preached January 27th. 2018. And, and, and what we were seeing was Vespasian was already attacking Israel from 2016. Amen. So 2016, look how it ties in to our election. Our election was in 2016. God gave a, a grace period. And in 2018, amen, between 2016 and 2018, amen, what happened? Uh, 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 Vespasian pulled out, amen, Roman Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church, the Roman, Ca the Roman government pulled out, hallelujah, amen, oh, I'm, I'm talking in type, they pulled out of Jerusalem, they didn't, and a reprieve was given to the bride, the reprieve was given to the world actually, what happened is that, uh, you know, Vespasian heard news, just as he was about to take Jerusalem, he got news that uh, that Nero committed suicide, and Galba took the throne as a, as a, as a, as the uh, the Caesar. So he turned his armies around. He pulled out everything, and he head back towards uh, the the um, uh, to Rome. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then he took over the uh, the throne over there as the Caesar. But what was happening out in Israel is that they were rebellious, they were revolting, they were killing the the, Jew, the Roman Catholic, the Romans all over Jerusalem, all over the countryside. And Vespasian sent his son back in AD 70. Watch is a zero. 
So in AD 20, this was prophesied that the Roman Catholic Church will take over. Hallelujah. Now people are saying, well, I'm not really seeing this. Oh yeah? Then who is our current president? He's a Roman Catholic. Amen. Who's our president? Uh, Vice President of Roman Catholic following the Roman Catholic system. Following the Roman Catholic Christianity doctrine. Amen. Profess Christianity. Hallelujah. This is what? This is the beast that came out of, of, of the earth. Amen. Normally beasts come out of, of, uh, of, of uh, uh, normally beasts come out of multitudes and people. They are the power. But this beast came out of the earth. This beast was a wilderness. Amen. No one lived here for years and years and years except the, Abra the Indians. Amen. So the beast came out of the, out of the, the earth and this beast, amen, the prophet brother Branham. Amen. And you, if you want to know more about brother Branham, visit our website and there on the missions, click and you will see uh, 55 minutes, 13 seconds video about an explanation. But because of time, I cannot give you all the details. But he's a prophet of the seven church age. And he said that beast was an American buffalo. Amen. It had two horns. Amen. Hallelujah. But spoke like a dragon. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you look closely, a buffalo in a sense, his face is almost like a little lamb. But he has two horns. Amen. Oh, but he was a buffalo. Amen. And he rise up. Hallelujah. In America, where the greatest nation upon the face of the earth that could call down fire from heaven what do you mean call down fire from heaven brother Sipasad? oh they have the missiles that could blast the missiles sometimes doesn't have to hit the earth you know sometimes they explode just above the earth and the, and the, 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 the concussion or whatever the, that, 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 that kills people the radiation the, 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 the sound waves the, 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 whatever they just kill them all America has that ability. America has that power. America is a super super power upon the earth and still is. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And this American buffalo came up. Now what is what we prophesy, brother? That what I just played unto you. What did we say? That Rome will come in in 2020. A prophecy that Rome will come in in 2020 and it will ultimately become a woman president. Brother, sister, now if you, let's type closely. Now Vespasian came in 66, amen, and was wiping around the country, coming up to, to Jerusalem. The, but when he got to Jerusalem in 66, what happened in 68 when he got to Jerusalem? In 68, he had to pull back and go to Rome because uh, Nero died and he was going to be the, the next uh, uh, Caesar. But what happened in 70, in, in AD 70, what happened? Which is 2020. Oh, Titus came back into Jerusalem and surrounded Jerusalem in 2020. Hallelujah. And what happened? Oh, they were killing men. They were killing women. They're killing the old ones. They're killing the young ones. They're killing the children. Uh, everyone was being killed. And uh, what is happening nowadays? Look all around you, brother, in 2020. What happened? The world was shocked by a killing. Hallelujah. The whole world was shocked by a virus that, uh, I'm sorry, a sickness that was released, amen, onto the people that has been proven to be, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, mu uh, mutilated or, or genetically modified. So it was released to the people for what? For the great reset, amen. For a great reset by the devil. What is happening? How many people are being slaughtered and dying and killing? And you don't know if another variant will going to come up. Is this the A variant? The Alpha, Omega, Beta, whatever it is, is this variant number? 26 by next year. Well, then I'll need the 26 injection. Oh, brother and sister, are you not seeing that Titus, amen? Titus, amen. The spirit, spiritual spirit, spirit of Titus, Rome, Catholic, has uh, the Rome has loosed upon the earth, brother. Amen. That is, I mean, brother and sister, I have to speak almost like a, a, a little bit in parables and riddles because, uh, you know, I don't even know if they allow you, me afterwards to put certain things on the website and distribute it. But brother, I'm telling you, it is a pattern. Uh, what happened? You had from 2020, 2018 to 2020 to get ready, to get under the blood, to get righteous. It's still not too late, brother. Now is the time. Now is the time to flee. Flee, flee to the horns of the altar. Brother, if you are, if you have your job is more important to you, then you're, you're gone, brother. You're lost. You're staying in time with Titus. You're locked up in Jerusalem. If your wife is more important than what you're doing, than serving the Lord, then you're locked up in Jerusalem. Titus will slay you all right and left and center. He will slay you. Oh, praise God. What is this, Titus? Amen. The sickness that is sweeping upon the earth. God allow it to be loosed. Amen. 
Oh, hallelujah. If you think, if your money is more important than your store that you have, and that you store, how much money am I going to make? How am I going to send my children to school? How much money, 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 brother? Then you're lost. Amen. You're lost. Amen. Titus will get you. Amen. Hallelujah. This sickness will take you, brother and sister. Oh, hallelujah. Flee, run to the altar. So, what time is it? Oh, the door is about to be shut. Hallelujah. If prophecy, look back, brother. Look back to, tw uh, sister, to 2018, January 1st, January 27, 2018. Prophecy come to uh, come to pass, Amen. And if God is speaking back then, He's speaking to you now. He's telling, you, look back. You see, I spoke it. I told you this. I told you what is going to happen. And that's thus said the Lord is happening. So what about now? He's saying, repent, flee to the horns of the altar. Oh, don't take this, uh, uh, you know, this lightly, Amen. I am not telling anyone not to take this uh, this injection or not to, whether to take it or not. I'm leaving that in the hands of you, my brother my sister amen but a mark is going on the marking is going on the marking of the holy ghost uh, called elected sons and daughters of god amen today i may not read a lot of quotes but i'm going to just talk with you today i'm going to talk to you about the importance of what is going on today oh flee to the altar i could back up the quotes and tell you all that brother Barham say about titus and vespasian and all these things make haste now brother so is what is the time amen there's so much uh, quotes I could I could read for you, amen. But go, but I want to talk to you today, amen. Because what I'm speaking to you is the word of God that is that is coming directly to me through the ears, to my ears, amen. I'm a nothing brother. Oh, I want to hear what is being said afterwards. But oh, hear the cry of the Holy Spirit today is a prophetic utterance to you this morning that God spoke to you in January 27, 2018. He tell you about about 2020. He told you what is going to take place he does it in parables amen he told you and he told you about a slaughtering that was going to take place where was it since in the history of the world has there been a slaughter and a lockdown and a, and a restriction on your movements and churches that is happening today amen it is not a light thing brother and sister oh titus is slain right left and center all about he's taking the little ones also now Amen. What is it, brother? It is judgment is striking. Amen. Jerusalem is surrounded by armies. Amen. America is surrounded by this army of the sickness. Amen. There's a next variant waiting in the sideline. The Lamba variant waiting in the sideline. Then there is another sort of plague that they just identified but they're keeping it quiet amen as a result of the immune system of the people because of all this mass because of now there's lung problems now there's oh brother and sister what can i tell you oh i cannot explain enough for you to tell you the time is at hand why you want to go run away and play church and steal people uh, uh, you know uh, beckon other people and say come let's find my church here that pastor can't preach somebody too sick his wife is uh, you know scandalous and doing crazy crazy things what are you doing brother you're leading your people to hell amen come on come out of that my brother and sister oh brother hallelujah come out of that come out to come out of all these ungodly churches that is preaching you false doctrine amen and come out of them amen and follow after the word of the lord the time is short Sirs, what time is it? It's a time for desperation. It's a time for consecration. It's a time to give yourself completely unto Lord. Why are you worried about your job? Oh, you don't want to take the, the in injection and they say, well, we're going to fire you. Well, let them fire you. Amen. My God owned the cattle on a thousand hills. No, I'm concerned too, like a human being. Amen. It might happen to my wife. It might happen to my family. Oh, yes, it will happen. It's going to happen. Amen. But what am I more concerned about? I want to know that I'm ready. I want to know I'm getting ready. I know that I'm praying up. I know that I'm, I'm fellowshipping my brothers. I know that I'm reading my Bible. I'm listening to this prophet message. I want to know that I'm walking in step with my father. Walking in step. You could laugh at me. You could shout at me. You could ball up at me. You could insult me. You could call me seated a serpent. You could say whatever you want about me. Call, don't call me late for the rapture. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm one of them, one of them. I know that the the, the Spirit of the Lord God, live in my soul. Can you put your foot down and say the same thing that I have had an experience of the Holy Spirit? 
have had an experience where God is living in my soul. Can you say the same thing? If you can't say that without a shadow of a doubt, then you need to get down back on your knees and say, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit. God, give me your Holy Spirit. Let me be different. Let me be changed. Let me be sanctified. I want to be ready for the rapture. Your job is going to go down to hell, brother. All those people that are your bosses, oh, as Brother Bam say, if they don't repent, they are, they are atomic fodder. Amen. The, 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 uh, 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 Russia is going to evade uh, according to Brother Branham. Amen. He talked about well, what you're going to do when you see these Russian soldiers come and ravish their daughters all in the street, go into your houses, ramsack your houses. It's going to happen. Amen. You say, well, Brother Zibazar, I don't think that will happen. We're too big. Oh, yeah? What, what, what face we have? Look what has just happened in Afghanistan. Amen. What are we? We're the laughing stock of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. The greatest power. Why? Because America rejected Jesus Christ. America rejected the prophet God, that God sent in this last age. America rejected and there is no more salvation for America but judgment. And judgment starts at the house of God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I'm warning you today, my brother and sister. Take this as a warning. Amen. You not, might not be saved. You might not know the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm telling you, you need to know Jesus. You need to come and come to repentance before the Lord Jesus Christ. I say I'm wrong I've sinned save me Lord and he will come and help you he will have broken and contrite heart he will not despise hallelujah this morning yea he the word of the Lord the time is short sirs what time are we living in oh the prophet say when you want to watch uh, know the time you look at your watch when you want to know the date and uh, uh, the day of the month, you watch the calendar. You want to know the, the month, you watch the calendar. You want to know the year, you watch the calendar. And when you want to know what is the seriousness of the hour, you watch the Jews. You watch what is taking place in, the Jew, in, in Israel and what is happening in Israel. Do you know Israel is probably the most vaccinated um, uh, country in the world? Uh, hallelujah. But what has happened? They all took this injection. They took the one injection, took the two injections. And what what is happening? The greatest outbreak, amen, of the same thing is happening already again. They want to say, we don't know what is going on. It's a sign. It's a sign. Do you understand? That's a sign. God, when He speaks something, there's always a, uh, a, a ecclesiastical aspect of it. And there's also a physical aspect to it. So God is also tying in the spiritual and the ecclesiastical aspect in Israel. It's happening in Israel. Don't you understand that Titus has invaded Israel and is killing them all on each side amen but it's not coming to those that are being marked by the holy spirit amen oh the angel is saying no not that one no not that one no that one is starting to happen already brother and sister oh it's starting to happen where are we are brother where we are sister because uh, uh, jerusalem in, is encompassed with armies at this moment amen jerusalem israel is encompassed with armies this moment what is the army the armies of sickness the army of this uh the sickness that is plaguing this earth brother and sister hear the word of the lord this morning but those who are full of the holy spirit there will be a mark put on their head not a tattoo it's a baptism of the holy spirit let's just read hallelujah question and answers amen Question and answers, Jeffersonville, Indiana, Saturday the 15th of May 1954. Paragraph um, 79, the last part. And now you see, that's just a little different class of people than what we are. Thank God, that's right, thank God, that's the mark. There's the mark we are talking about. Paragraph 84. And, and, but however, the mark that was put on their head was not a tattoo, was not tattoo, was it? What was it? The baptism of the Holy Spirit. And what is the mark that's going to be for the last day? The Bible says the seal of God was the baptism of the Holy Spirit for the people in this last day. What is a seal? A seal cannot be put on anything until it's complete. The Lutherans wasn't sealed. The day of the dispensation of grace wasn't completed. They preached, just, they preached justification. Methodist wasn't sealed. I'm getting to a question here. And not sealed because it wasn't complete. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a completion of the work, works of God that's taking place in this day. End of quote. The seal of, uh, of the Christ, Los Angeles, California, Saturday the 12th of Ma uh, March 1955, second, second part of paragraph E48, quote per Branham. Then when the great time come, all the big confederation of churches come together 
and went into the city and Titus besieged the city and for years he kept them in there two or three years till they starved to death and boiled their own children and eat it and then they slaughtered them when they come in and they didn't have pity or nothing to fulfill what Ezekiel said utterly destroy the blood run down the city was burnt the stones not le one left on another because God sent this finished work from Calvary and people turned the deaf air to it and the devil bore the air and, and they are that way yet today. Amen. Paragraph Paragraph E50. No notice you say, Brother Branham. What does that seal? Last night someone, well you brother, that said on the radio that the seal would be a tattoo across your head. The seal of God would be a tattoo on your head. What was the seal of God in the first place? The seal of God was a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Not a mark on your head, but a mark on your hand. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And as we read in Revelation, Lord, that there were Jews that to be sealed. In Israel, the paragraph E53, the Jew is already to be sealed right away. They are setting in Jerusalem right now. And you see what has happened? Titus has surrounded them. Amen. By what? By this plague. By the sickness. Amen. The, 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 the whole world is been looking at Israel about how are they monitoring, what are they doing in terms of this sickness. Amen. Read the newspaper. Israel is the focus right now of what has taken place. Because almost everyone there in, in uh, Israel has been, vac uh, has been injected. Amen. Has the in injection. Amen. But it's still breaking out. Now the Jews, Israel is ready to be sealed right away. They are setting in Jerusalem right now. They are waiting for somebody to come and prove it to them that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then when the Jews receive the gospel, the Gentile day is done. God will return back to the Jews as certain as I'm standing at the end of court. So what, how, how close we are, brother and sister. They are waiting on who? Moses and Elijah. They wait on us. They wait on us also. So that we could display Jesus Christ. They are looking for a, a Jesus walking in Palestinian garment. But no, the only Jesus they are going to see is the Jesus Christ that is in you. They are going to see Christ in you. They say, that's what we were looking for. That's what we wanted. We want Him to write the laws upon our heart. And what is it when He writes the laws upon your heart? Is what? Is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It says a plague, brother. They are surrounded Jerusalem. A siege. The eyes are on Jerusalem. The eyes are on Israel. What is taking place? Amen. What is taking place? And in Israel, oh, what they have also had. They have a bracelet or something. And an app on your phone that shows that you have taken the injection. Amen. They say that you, you have it. Taken your injection. Hallelujah. So they, oh, you could go through anywhere and wave your hand and they will know that you have been injected. Amen. Hallelujah. The injection that didn't work. The injection that still is not working and they're still scratching their heads, everyone. Why it is so, brother Sipa said, it's a plague. Amen. They have been unleashed on this world of rejectors and disobedient. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, so hear, my, hear my, uh, my cry unto you this morning. Amen. Run into Christ. Run into the safety of the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't need, you don't need an injection to overcome whatever it is. You ought to overcome by the blood of the Lamb. You have to overcome. And if, by, if so be it that God decided to take you because uh, you know, and He used that to take you, then oh, near am I God to thee. I'm coming back to you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm coming back in the resurrection. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Brother and sister, hear the warning of the Holy Spirit today on the 28th of 29th of August. Amen. September. Now let's go back to Vespasian and Titus. So Titus uh, Vespasian is now the emperor in Rome. A new authority. Amen. Just like in 2020, a new authority take place. Amen. And you know what? We are also looking for a new Pope uh, that comes out of America to take the throne in, in the Vatican. An American Pope. And somebody had even mentioned that there, it might be a black Pope. But I don't kind of, I didn't find a quote from Brother Bram where he says it's going to be a black Pope. But let me tell you how prophecy is going to take place, brother and sister. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord in, 29, in 2020, in 2020, in November, same time for the election of them, for the, the, the American president. What happened? 
a black primate, a black cardinal was uh, was elected, amen, to stand in Washington, D.C., amen. His name is Gregory somebody, I forget his name. For the first time in the history of the, uh, of, uh, the American uh, uh, primates or cardinals that are in line for the, for the papacy, in line to be the next pope, amen, is the first time in history was there a black cardinal uh, in Washington, D.C. How that, that is that coincidence? There is nothing of coincidence, brother and sister. Some sister told me about, oh, well, it ha this mark is the World Council of Churches. Oh, yeah, we, we, they have to, are you waiting for the World Council of Churches to come out? I am the World Council of Churches. I am directing you to know the, the devil is too smart for that. He's a subtle beast. He knows that if he do that, oh, a lot of people will come. Even the, even the even people who are in denomination will turn away. So what he does, he does it behind the scenes. And last service I read to you how the World Council of Churches are getting involved. Getting involved in this, in this injection and, this, and, 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 and educating and all this stuff. So it's already done, sister. It's already done. They already have that, that mark set up. Amen. Now, uh, sometimes you say, well, brothers, you've you got to understand that the Bible always speak in twofold. It's either it's both ecclesiastical and both political, economical, or physical. It's always that too. Remember that, amen. So Vespasian pulled back, went to Rome, become become the new the new Pope. I'm sorry, become the new uh, uh, Caesar. Amen. And sent his son, hallelujah. Sent his son to, to, to sack Rome. To, I mean to sack uh, Israel, to sack Jerusalem. So watch the dates, brother. Watch the dates. Amen. God always leave a testimony so that you cannot be without a witness. He must leave a witness. He must tell you what's going on. Amen. What he said, he tell, he tell um, uh, Abraham, would I hide what I'm going to do about uh, to hide my, 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 my son, the inheritance of, of Israel here? Am I going to hide? I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So God must leave a witness. Now what was that witness? Is this type, amen, this type of, uh, of Rome moving into Jerusalem. Do you know America is typed as Israel, spiritual Israel? America is typed as spiritual Israel. America is the place in the wilderness where the, the persecuted church ran away from the, from the beast. From, um, from the dark ages and, the, and uh, the inquisition, they ran away and they came to America wilderness and there God fed her for 42 months. Well, I don't know all the details about the time, but he fed her and took care of her. Amen. After she had given birth to that child, which was the church in, 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 in Europe and other places, amen, came to America, hallelujah, sheltered. So America is special. No, America is, a, is, is spiritually, is a, is a physical and spiritual type of Israel. Amen. So what happened now is that here Titus came back and in April, in March, April, he sp had a siege for Jerusalem. Go back, brother, Nick, last year, 2020. What happened March, April? Oh, brother, what happened March, April? Amen. What happened? What happened this March and April? Amen. This year, March and April. Watch what happened. March and April. He is there. Amen. The virus, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, 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 the sickness broke out. Amen. The sickness broke out. Hallelujah. Now, but what happened? He stayed there March to April, May, June, July, August, September. Amen. Six months. Five, six to seven months. He sieged Jerusalem. Brother, uh, 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 in that message, continue and I uh, God had you had me say, watch March and then watch September. Watch September, brother. Next month. That's why he commissioned me this morning. He said, go on and warn them. Go and tell them. Preach this word. Tell them what is happening. Watch September month. September and October month. Watch what is taking place. Amen. Remember Vespasian. The, move himself out and send his son. Amen. And his Sunday son had two special generals. Amen. 
What is taking place? Could it be, brother, that next month, starting next, uh, on the 8th of September is when he sacked Jerusalem, when he was able to breach the walls, uh, um, Titus, and get into Jerusalem on the 8th of September. That's when he was able to do it. So, brother, I don't know. I'm not saying it's going to happen in the 8th of the September. I'm not going to say it happened in September. But all I'm going to say is that how I feel led as a, as a as a Bible student, as prophecy, seeing what God spoke in January 27, 2018, seeing what He spoke back then, taking that same inspiration, and letting you know that, brother, watch September, October, especially September. Could it be, amen, that, uh, you know, Article 25, amen, you know, let's say Article 25, oh, praise God, may take place, hallelujah. Could it be, amen, that we have, the prophecy of brother William Marion Branham take place in September? Could it be brother? Could it be sister where a woman become president? Oh, hallelujah. That is the word of the Lord. Could it be September, October? It's looking that way. It's looking that way. Amen. Amen. Because one of the generals probably was not acting properly. He didn't do the right thing. He, did, he did the, didn't do the war properly. Amen. So they probably have to replace him. Oh, praise God. So watch September, brother. That is, thus said the Lord according to His word. Amen. According to when, when, um, uh, when He spoke about Jerusalem is surrounded by armies. Are we surrounded, brother? Are we surrounded? What are we surrounded with? Fear. People are surrounded by fear because of the sickness. They don't know when it's going to have another strain of the sickness. They don't know. They look into the government. They look into Rome. Amen. And I've read many articles where the Rome and the Roman Catholic Church had a major, a major, major issue, a major, major influence in this last election. I've read it. I don't know whether to believe it or not, but I'm just pointing out to you what do you see on the internet. All I'm saying is on the internet, brother. You could search it all for yourself. Oh, and what is going on? I saw a video yesterday. Of a friend of mine sent it to me when this young man, amen, they, 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 with one shot of a, a cutlass, they cut his head off. Oh my, what is happening? The raving difference, oh hallelujah, to the life of human beings. They're killing them. They're killing them all, so much all in, uh, in Afghanistan. They're doing this. Why? Because they profess Christianity. They profess to help America. Oh brother and sister, it saddens my heart that our pastors there, they're missionaries there that they can't come out. They're all going to die if they can't get, get, out, get out. And we are the most powerful nation on the earth. We have the best armies in the earth, the best trained soldiers in the earth, the best uh, 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 green barracks and navy seals in the earth, thousands of ships and aircrafts and planes. Oh my, we drop half a million troops inside. What are they going to do? What are they going to do if we drop a half a million troops? Amen. And, and, and take over the other airport and take over, go and, 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 and go house to house to find these people. Amen. Sure, we're going to have a lot of, lot of lives lost. Oh, but America has rejected Jesus Christ. America has rejected this gospel. There's nothing else. There's no salvation for America. Brother Branham said, don't even pray for America. He said, pray for your leaders. That they will guide us and show us the right way to go. He said, don't even pray for them. America is lost, brother. There's no praying for America no more. You pray for your family. You pray for your soul. You make sure you're right. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Here, Brother Branham, say here. Our question answers one. Jeffersonville, Indiana. COD book. The 3rd of uh, January, 1954, morning service. He was asked a question. Question number nine. What position will the church be in when the gospel returns to the Jews? Paragraph 656. Here, Brother Branham, saying here. He said, now as Jerusalem compassed about with armies. Isn't that, isn't that strange that he's asking the question about what position would the church be in when the gospel returned to the Jews? And this, I'm now seeing this. And here the prophet is answering and telling them about Titus. So that means that brother, this inspiration, this revelation is real, correct, is thus said the Lord. Hear what Brother Abraham said. And now as Jerusalem compassed about with armies. But literally, historically, that was done about AD 96. What Brother Abraham uh, turned it around was 69. When Titus was, had besieged Jerusalem. But now watch this closely. You can see the difference. Now I believe that Jerusalem will be compassed about with armies again at the end time. Oh my. 
Well, I believe this here was comparing when when Titus besieged it, when the desolation bear out. Amen. Right, end of quote. You see, Brother Branham, Titan? Hear what he says here. Look, that's the paragraph 93. Look, that's the way as the supernatural brought in the Gentile kingdom. So the supernatural has taken out this out of the Gentiles. The kingdom was ushered in by the supernatural, by going out by the supernatural. I just want to read something here to you. You know, God, Brabham here, he says, now as uh, this paragraph 53, second part, now many knows that the scripture has a compound meaning to every prophecy. Sure it does. Yes, sir. I will say it mean it just exactly at this time and turn around and repeat it again back there over there somewhere. Now, I refer to one of them, if I can just think of it right quick. Now, in Luke or Matthew 2, he said, Jesus was called out of Egypt that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I call my son out of Egypt. Now, that prophecy referring back then by that prophet was exactly referring to Israel, which was God's son. He called out of Egypt, that's right, in Genesis and Exodus. And it was referred to there. It was repeated again, out of Israel was his God's son. You know that. He told Sarah, let you, and he had done to his son that he would take the life. He wouldn't let his son go. Pharaoh, God's taken Pharaoh's son, or the death angel, that was right. It's a compound meaning. And here Brother Abraham said, now as Jerusalem compass about with armies. Oh, here it is now, brother and sister. He just said there's a compound meaning. There's a spiritual application and how Jerusalem is going to compass with armies right now. It's um, compassed because of the sickness. The eyes of the world is on Israel. Because of the sickness. Watch closely. Read the news. Amen. See what is going on. And that was during 18, uh, uh, 69, 70. When Titus has besieged Jerusalem. But now watch this closely. You can see the difference. Now I believe that Jerusalem will become passable with armies again at the end time. But I believe that there was comparing with Titus besieged it when the desolation took place. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. What are we saying, brother? Oh, run for your life, brother. Don't, sister, don't let anything bother you. Don't let anything hold you back. Whether you're worried about your job, whether you're worried about your children, whether you're worried about what you're going to eat. Oh, brother, don't even worry about those things. What did Jesus say? Consider the lilies. Amen. you got to have faith to believe. Divine healing is going to be a great thing when this outpouring comes in. Brother, if this is not a squeeze, then what is it? What is the squeeze? If this is not a pressure upon you that you can't go to work soon without you have this, this uh, injection. You can't go in the grocery way unless you have this injection. You can't travel unless you have this injection. You can't go... Look, I just heard a clip that it's, it seems in some place in, uh, in the Caribbean, in Africa, where he said, if you don't even have evidence that you have the injection, you can't go to the bank to draw out your money. If you don't have evidence of, of, uh, uh, that you have this injection, you can't go to the store. You can't go anywhere. You can't go to the movies. You can't go to nothing. You cannot go to church, they said, if you don't have evidence of this injection. Oh, brother, so what is this? This is Revelation chapter 13. And then believers will run quickly and take whatever the, whatever the, 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 um, the, the government says for you to do. Amen. You run quickly and you take it. Did you examine the Bible? Did you examine prophecy? Did you go before the Lord and pray? Amen. Oh, are you sick? Were you sick? That's why you went to take it. If you're sick, we allow doctors to come and help us if you're sick. You know, to help the body to heal, but only God heals. Were you sick? Then why did you run and take this injection? Amen. Why? Oh, I want to travel. No excuse. And you, your soul could be doomed to hell, brother. What is going to happen? When they demand now that they come and say you have to wear something now that proves that you, inoc that you have this vaccine, um, this, this injection. What are you going to do? Maybe this, this, it is already in the second dose of this injection. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a medical professional. I'm a son of the living God. I'm a Bible student. A, prophet, a student of prophecy. I have seen clips where there is this magnetic thing that is, that is in, the, that in the injection. And when they give you the second one, maybe it is something to join together that you could be tracked, that you could that you know you have it. Oh, brother and sister, please, oh, read it. There's God. Where the, you know there's a saying: where there's smoke, there's fire. Amen. If the unbelieving doctors, thousands and thousands of them are so concerned about it and they've been silenced, don't you know that something is wrong? 
if the thousands and thousands and thousands of people and scientists, even those who help create it, are saying something is wrong here and they're being silenced. They cannot go on the internet. They cannot go on certain platforms and speak their mind. They're taken off. There's this doctor. She is a, she has all completely been wiped out. It is what you call cancel culture. Amen. And if you speak again, why do you think so many of these, these, uh, these senators and, 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 um, and uh, opposition senators and all these people are so fearful? They are fearful for their life. They are fearful for their family life. Amen. I watch a, I, uh, on the news. I watch one of these uh, great um, senator. Amen. Who stood up for the last president. Oh, he was firm. He was assured. He was assured of what you're doing. But when you look at him. No, he's giving his interview. He has shifty eyes. He's looking all on the side. He's like, oh, scared. Amen. What is it? They got to him. Amen. They got to him. Cancel culture. They will cancel. And believe it, brother and sister, they're going to do the same thing to you once you stand for this word of God. They're going to cancel you out. They're going to cut, cut you away from everything, brother. But when your father forsake you, when your mother forsake you, when the world forsake you, read that Psalm 56. God tell me, he said, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the angel Lord told me, read that Psalm for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that Psalm tells you what? When they all condemn you, when they all fight you, when they all say all kind of stuff about you, oh, the Lord will take you up. He is your refuge and your strength. Believe. And you know, brother, it wouldn't come when it's now. That, that, that uh, rescue, that deliverance wouldn't come when it now starts. It wouldn't come really like now. No. God waits until it becomes dark, or it becomes impossible. For you to do anything else to save yourself. He waits until that moment comes. And then he comes down. And deliver you with a mighty hand. Why you say brother Sipasar he does that. He wants to show you. That you could do nothing on your own. It is he. He is the one that gives you deliverance. Brother and sister we serve a mighty God. We serve this Elohim, great eternal seven color rainbow spirit. That existed before the world was informed. That flowed into a logos. Amen. That you are part of that Logos. He who are alive and remain are part of that Logos. No, you are not the Logos. You are part of him. You are part like the sea water that comes out of the sea. A bucket of that sea water. He is the total sea representative. Oh, hallelujah. Brother, have faith. Believe. They could ball up on you. They could shout at you. They could scream at you. They could say all kind of evil against you. They could condemn you. They could say all kind of things about you, your family. But brother, you hold on to this word. Amen. Judgment is coming for them. You just leave them in the hands of the Lord. Amen. Judgment if they don't repent. Oh, judgment is coming for them. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Warning this morning. I'm sorry. I didn't read a lot of quotes. Amen. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just read this quote here. Question and answers. Same book. This is last part of paragraph 207. Praise God. Let's read the, uh, 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 yeah, the middle part. Paragraph 207. Now, here come another one. Quote Brother Branham. Here, now come another one. Now, you'll watch. Refer the angel. He is the same angel that came out in Ezekiel 9. When the men came from behind their gates with slaughter and weapons and was going through Jerusalem to slaughter the Jews. You remember? He said, hold it, hold it, stop it till you go through the city and put a mark on every forehead that sighs and cries for the abomination done in the city. Is that right? Then after he did that, then he let go in the slaughter. That was the persecution under Titus. Now you see, he is the same angel. Come forth, the angel of covenant. Come forth. Coming from the east, from where Jesus shall come. And he has the seal of the living God. Amen. Now what's the seal of the living God? It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. End of quote. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hear what you say here. This is uh, this is uh, <clears throat> same book. Uh, same book, paragraph 225. Amen. Now here it is, these three tribes. Always keep them three in mind. Talk about the revelation we talk about, we just read. Revelation about the sealing of the, the tribes of Israel. Now keep them three in mind. Now we've seen here, this 144,000 around and great redeemed bride. And just the remnant, they are around that great redeemed bride. They are not the bride. And just remnant was left. There you are, there's the Jews. They are sealed, 144,000. Here's the one that sanctified and refused to get the Holy Ghost. See, three people, the bride, 144,000, 
and the sanctified one who refused to get the Holy Ghost, the church will persecute against, the Roman Catholic Church will persecute them, and them will persecute them, the Roman Catholic Church, but the brides were already raptured, and in heaven, and they are placed exactly the way brides say where they would be, end of quote, amen, oh hallelujah, Blessed be the name of the Lord. So what's going to happen to the, to the church oh, that remains in the tribulation period? They're going to be hunted, persecuted. Either you take this mark or we kill you. Amen. And it's happening. Listen. You say, Brother Zipa said, no, they won't kill you. All right. I just saw a video today, this morning. Oh, was it this morning or last night? I saw a video. They, they, they put this guy kneel down and they, they put his open open his neck like that, they pull his clothes down, and he's lying down there like a lamb to the slaughter, and this guy with his long uh, machete, about that size, or a sword about that size, that long, and he's uh, uh, there, and he's way, uh, uh, aiming himself, and then with one blow like that, whoosh, he cut the guy head off completely, and you telling me that they're not going to kill you, if you don't take this mark, oh come on brother, it's already happening, it's all happening. Believe it or not, it's all ha happening already. It's all happening overseas. And when they take over, it's going to happen right here, brother and sister. Oh, people don't understand what is taking place. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. 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 So we have the slaughter and angel. Amen. Hear what Brother Abraham say now. Um, um, where, the, where am I? Okay, hear this. Now, before the men could go to and slaughter the city, he said, Go ye. God's mercy first before judgment. I'm sure that's what America is hearing now. God mercy presented to the people before judgment. Then when he, he see this man went forth, right with the ink on his side, he said, Go into the city and set a seal upon the forehead of those men in Jerusalem that sigh and cry for the abomination that did in the city. Otherwise, before the great destruction of AD 96 or AD 69, 70, uh, Titus sieging the walls of Jerusalem, the city, the Holy Spirit went forth first. The man dressed in white with the markers, pencil on the side, to put a mark upon the men who sighed and cried for the abomination that was done in the city. God foretelling it, so they will be sure to get ready. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, escape hither. Come quickly. Uh, Waterloo, Iowa. Sunday, the 2nd of January, uh, February 1958. Paragraph 28. The same thing in the first coming of Christ. Before the destruction came. He told them, let him that's on the house up come not down. Let him that in the field come not down to get his things, but get out of the city. That's where those Jews are. They're down in Iran now and so forth. It's turned back and coming into Jerusalem. Not these Jews that cheats and steals and things make up that 144,000, but those true Jews down there that escape in the days when Titus besieged the walls or besieged Jerusalem. Oh, you see, it's kind of like showing a type and a form here. So he's identifying the, uh, a similar thing of what Titus has taken place up in, in AD 670. It's taken place now. He's, he's, he's intertwining it. Look closely. Read it. Write down the court. And they, um, and they and besieged Titus, besieged the walls of, or besieged Jerusalem. And they went into that great destruction there. And Jerusalem was scattered and the Jews, they have never come together until just recently again to fulfill what God said would take place. We are the end time believers. And then <clears throat> the ten virgins and 144,000 Jews, Jeffersonville, Indiana, the 11th of uh, uh, December 1960. Uh, quote Brother Branham. I can't read all the quotes. I'm just going to summarize it and read a little bit here. <clears throat> Hear what he says. And the mosque of Omar was erected where the temple stood. And Jesus spoke of that in Matthew 24. He said, When you see the abomination that maketh desolation standing in the holy place where Daniel spoke about it. That's in parenthesis. He that read it, let him understand. See? When you see this abomination, the filthiness of the Muslim of Omar standing there where the holy place once stood and today the Muslim stands there exactly where the holy place right on the temple site the Mohammedan Muslim stands as Jesus said would be as, G as Daniel said it would be and Jesus verified it would be Amen End of quote what he's saying it's a sign that the abomination that make a desolation is standing in the holy place look up redemption draw it nigh the Messiah is coming Amen 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 Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, let's just read again. 
Praise God. The mark of the beast and the seal of God. Paragraph E51. And when Titus came up, and this Jesus told them, when you see Jerusalem come past with them, he's now, I'm reading it physically for you, but take it in a spiritual aspect, put it as today. Amen. Now Titus uh, is a spiritual aspect. What is Titus, I believe? Oh, the, what is it? It's surrounding Jerusalem. What it is? It's what? It's this sickness that is surrounding. It's, it's, a, it's the whole world. Amen. That's my, that's my personal belief. Amen. But when Titus came up, and Jesus told them, when you see Jerusalem come past with armies, let him that's in the field don't return to get his coat, but hit for the hills of Judea as hard as you could. Get out of there, because they're going to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And if they blaspheme the Holy Ghost, they take the mark of the beast. There's nothing but destruction le le left. These Jews, when they seen trouble coming, they said, now we'll gather in the city, into the house of the Lord and pray. Does that sound very religious? Religious? Very sweet. Oh, Satan can make it look just so real, so sure. But remember, Josephus, the historian, said that those people that were cannibals said there's a bunch of that follow Jesus of Nazareth who went around healing the sick, said Pilate killed him and they stole his body away and set it out somewhere and cut it up and eat it. They were cannibals. And what were they doing? They were taking communion, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, none of the, that's Josephus, the historian, said none of them is lost because they hit out of for Judea just as the scripture told them to like Jesus was told had told them to end of quote I'm saying this to you to the same thing brother and sister oh flee 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 out of Jerusalem we have been encompassed by armies what is armies amen what are these armies is the is the hordes of Satan what is he doing sending sickness upon us sending this particular particular sickness upon us there was this this variant there was a the Brazilian variant there's a um, the, 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 the uh, Indian variant there's a, I don't know some other variant now there's a Delta then the next one is Lama and then on and on and on and on they'll go what would it be by the end of the year brother uh, variant number 56 amen variant number 666 I don't know what variant it might be. Oh, hallelujah. We are encompassed with armies. Get out, get out, get out. Sir, what is this? What is time is it? I'm telling you, brother, because prophecy is all around us being fulfilled. Don't play around with your salvation. Don't go up there and preach some wonderful flowery message. Moses crossed the Red Sea. Oh, uh, Joan and a whale. And, uh, and Rebecca and Boaz. That is wonderful. They're a good example. Tell the people what time it is. Tell the people to get ready. Use those examples, no problem. But just don't sit there and say, God is a good God. You know, He's really, really good, you know. He will take care of you, you know. He will heal you, you know. God is a healer. You know, God is really, really a healer, you know. Brother, teach the people the what time you're living in. Amen. Brother, you are falling down the wrong path. You are heading towards the tribulation period. Maybe hell, if you reject the Holy Spirit. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? Can you tell me the day you receive it? Can you tell me the experience? Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Amen. Can you tell me when this pillar of fire came inside your being? Hey, yes, sir. Praise the God. May God bless you. Oh, I feel the Lord, the blessings of the Lord. Confirmation of the Holy Spirit. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Do not neglect this, brother and sister. You must receive an experience of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You sitting in the church and say, Yeah, I think I have it. Ain't no thinking. Amen. Ain't you thinking at all. You must know. Minister, you preaching the gospel. Did you meet the pillar of fire, the backside of the desert? Did he burn inside of you? Do you have a burden for the people? Are you anointed by the Holy Spirit? Have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? If you have, if you're preaching this gospel without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're anointed one at the end time. Your false anointed one in the end time. I challenge you, brother, in the name of the Lord, show that token. Present your token. Show that you're called a God. Show that you're, you know, oh, praise God that you're called and the fire of God is standing upon you, is in you and living and, and, and giving the people the word of the living God. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit is not in you, if the revelation of this word is not in you, if the revelation of the prophet message is not in you, then brother, you're, and you're preaching this gospel, you're falsely anointed. Amen. Amen. And, and Barabbanam warn us about you. Amen. Repent. There's still blood in the mercy seat. Repent. 
Come back unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Go down on the altar. Go down and hold on to the altar until you receive the Holy Spirit. And then see if God will call you to minister. Brother, it's a burden. You, know, you think it is an easy thing to be called to minister? You know what Brother Branham went through? Brother Branham, after service, he's so much out of, in, out of his mind, like in a, and so much under the anoint still, he'll be crying in the car, telling Billy, please take me home to my wife and family. Please take me home to me and the children. I want to go home. But Billy Paul will say, no, Dad, you have two or three meetings again. Let me take you to the hotel. You know what? He cried. You know, my, my stomach problem, weakness. He said, yes, to hold on to the pulpit so that he's not buckled over and fall over. Amen. What is it, brother? It's a sacrifice. It is not an easy thing to be a minister. Do not really seek to be one, brother. Amen. Don't seek to be a minister of this gospel. The responsibility of souls rests in your hand. You've got to be dedicated. You've got to be consecrated. Go back and check your experience to see if you're called of God to be a minister. Amen. And if you're a minister, you have to be called in the five ministering gifts of Ephesians 4.11. Oh, brother, I challenge you, go before God. Amen. Stand. Let's bring the pillar of fire down and try that spirit that is in you. Amen. The pillar of fire is standing in front of you, brother. Woe unto you if you're teaching these people wrong things, if you're making them uh, 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 let that Roman Catholic or any kind of uh, religious spirit come into your church. A Baptist spirit has come into your church. A Roman Catholic spirit has come into your church. A Pentecostal spirit has come into your church. Then you have gone back oh God, to the mark of the beast. You have gone back to the, to the mother of harlots. Come out, come out, come out. No, they're my people. And brother and sister, if you hear the sound of this word of God, I challenge you. Challenge that message that's been preached in your church. Challenge it. Match it with the word of God. And if it's not the word of God, run out of it, brother. Get out of there. Get out of there. Amen. The time is still. You don't even have. They're not allowing to have church anyhow. So if you stay home and hear the word of the Lord. It's up to you and God. You fellowship with your brothers on the phone. On the internet. You join up on the webcast. You're free to join up on my webcast. I know I'm not popular. There are very few that want to hear me. Amen. There are some that are blocking me. It doesn't matter brother. My job was to do what? To preach that gospel. My job is to warn you. That you're on your way to hell. If you don't have the Holy Ghost. That's my job. That if you think your job is more important than that, then you're on your way to hell. You're on your way to the tribulation period. My job is to warn you by the Holy Spirit, to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. But His job, oh, that great pillar of fire, that El 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 Elohim, that anointed Holy Spirit, amen. His job is to go to you and to convict you and to bring you to Him, amen. His job is to save. So who reject me? Call me son of the serpent. Who reject me and say he's a crazy man? He reject me and tell me all kind of stuff and and write me all kind of emails and and condemn whatever. It doesn't matter, brother and sister. Oh, I'm doing my job as the best I could. Don't you know I have to go back to the messages and listen what has been said? Because I don't even know some of the thoughts that are that going on. Amen. I want to hear it back. I want to be blessed like you. I want to sit in a church or sit under an inspiration of an of a, of a internet and sit and hear a man of God preach to me about my, my promises. Preach to me about the new Jerusalem. Preach to me about the resurrection. Preach to me about the voice of the archangel. Oh, hallelujah. Here, let's hear some things that are coming upon the earth and we'll close in a few minutes. The handwriting on the wall. Jeffersonville, Indiana. Sunday the 9th of March, 1958. Morning service. Paragraph uh, E55. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And right at that same time, Amen. When prophecy was being given, while the, uh, listen close now in closing, while the prophecy was being given, what taking place? He was talking about uh, uh, Daniel was do, was uh, uh, interpreting mini mini who parasin. He was interpreting in a handwriting on the wall. At the same time, the prophecy was given. The Medes and the Persians were coming through the gate. The temple guards had been slaughtered. The castle guards were spread out in the streets. Listen. Ten minutes later, those modern young girls now. I have to let you know how Brother Branham speak. He's looking in the past and he's seeing this thing happen. But then he's bringing it to a present tense. Look how he's doing it. Remember, there's always two things. There's an ecclesiastical and a physical part. And so it is in prophecy. Amen. So watch closely. When he's speaking something, he's also bringing it present tense. He's almost mixing it up like, but it's hidden for, but for you to be revealed, to open up to you. Hear what he says here. The temple guards have been slaughtered. The castle guards were spread out in the streets. Listen, 
Ten minutes later, those modern, modern young girls, beautiful, those modern women, away from their babies and children. What happened? What's taking place? They would be strung into the streets. They were ravished by soldiers. Their bellies were split open. And the disgrace that it was brought upon them because they failed to listen. But it was too far. Listen, friend. There isn't quote per banam. Paragraph E56. Listen to this closely what he's saying. Listen, friend. There isn't a thing this very hour in the next 25 minutes or 10 minutes for Russia to send up a satellite and sweep it up over this nation, train its missile and say, surrender, or in two minutes you'll be nothing but dust. They can do it right now. Think of it. They can do it right now. What would happen? Plane load after plane load, ship load after ship load of ungodly communistic soldiers will swallow our lands, will grab our girls and take them out into the street and treat them like cattle. Ram a sword through them, go into their homes, take our wives out and bust the baby's head against the wall and ravish the women. You say one thing, it belongs to them. Oh, you see what Brother Ram saying here? You see what Brother Ram saying? It is his prophecy. I leave it in your hands, brother, sister. You say, well, our Pentagon would sur surrender? Sure it would. That would be the only sensible thing to do. It would do it. If I didn't, we will be nothing but powder in a few minutes. If we don't do it, if it didn't, we will be powder in a few minutes. We will have may maybe a few more hours of life. But what is slaughter? What? They may be loading on the planes right now. Prophecy, brother, I'm saying, brother and sister. There's what he's saying. It's going to happen. You want to be here in the United States when that takes place? You want to be here? You got to get ready for this rapture. Amen. Your guns won't help you. No matter what. The only thing will help you if you had received the Holy Ghost and be caught up in the rapture. There may be a few more, uh, hours of life. But what a, what a slaughter. They may be loading the planes right now. The ships may be in the harbor. Soon these things that we are talking about will can be a reality. That's not one thing left to happen. But it keep from happening according to prophecy. Here we are. And next week we don't know what condition we'll be in. The handwriting is on the wall. We weighed in the balance and found wanting. So what I'm saying this morning, brother and sister, oh, you got to, you got to seek the face of the Lord. You got to come unto Christ. Oh, there's, there's a, there's a palm in Gilead. There's the physician in the land. Come unto the Lord. His arms are all open. It's not, it's not. Judgment has not fully strike yet. It's happening all around us. Oh, come to the Lord Jesus. Repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost this morning, this night, uh, this afternoon now. Oh, Christ is calling. Come unto me, all ye that labor. And I heavenly, I love you. I care about you. I don't want you to be in this time when, when, the, when the, uh, Russia is going to take over and blow up America. I don't want to be you in that time when California sinks into the sea. And because of all that, now you be, would be here when California sinks into the sea. But when the... Uh, the, 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 the the, uh, 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 the, the crazy things that goes on and the killing. Brother, it's happening all around us, please. Oh, I beg of you today, as a minister of the gospel, my heart is grieving for those out there. Don't be backsliding. Don't come back to the Lord Jesus. This is the end. This is the close of the Gentile season. Titus has surrounded Jerusalem 2020. Amen. The plague is striking the earth. Amen. And he's killing on all sides. Hallelujah. Watch September. Watch October. Amen. Watch these last few months of the year. Oh brother, you'll be shocked. But prophecy is going to take place. Could it be a new, uh, the woman president? It's going to happen, brother. It's going to take place. Maybe, oh, next month, few days. Oh, please, brother and sister. Oh, 9-11 is coming up. It's a memorial. Amen. Could it be, brother and sister? A drastic step is going to be taken on that particular day. Hallelujah. Oh, to avenge the blood of Americans. I don't know, brother. I could only say what I feel in my heart to say, Amen. Oh, shall we stand? Come to the Lord Jesus. Backslider, come to the Lord Jesus. Unbeliever, come to the Lord Jesus. Brother, you have my website. You have my phone number on my website. Please, if I could help you in some way, come to the Lord Jesus. Come, come. His, uh, he who are heavy laden, and I shall give you rest. Shall we stand? So we're gonna, I'm going to read a prayer from, from Brother Branham on the... Handwriting on the wall, 
uh, the 9th of March 1958 morning service from paragraph E58. E58 and E65 all the way to E70. Amen. Shall we pray? And hear what Brother Bram is saying. I want the deep thinking people in here. I want those who are really know that the man, what Jesus Christ has been talking to in the last few minutes, have been wrong. I want to get right with that man, Jesus. He's the only one, one who can read the handwriting. I want to be right. Would you raise your hand and say, pray for me, Brother Branham? Pray for me, amen. Oh God, standing in the midst of this hour of death, death to sin, death to indifference, death to sickness, the departing of diseases, your great spirit here interpreting their condition. I pray for those, for these who are standing at the altar, who knows that the handwriting is on the wall today. They don't have to take my word for it. They got your word now, Lord. They got the newspaper word, Lord. And I say the internet and the, and, the, and the cable televisions and so on. They got the scientists' word. And we know it. We be a ju- you be a just God. You could not let Babylon go in their condition without giving them their judgment. And neither would you let us go without getting without us getting our judgment. But we are praying this morning, Father, that those who are standing here will escape that judgment as they come safely under the arms of Jesus, as they come to listen that man, Jesus, that can interpret the spiritual and the supernatural. They have heard your voice, Lord. Speak, and they have come to listen to you. And when you spoke, they rose up from the seat and they come. They are not ashamed. Some of them, Lord, has been Christians a long time. They are not ashamed to witness that they have been wrong. And thou hast said, if you will witness me before men, him will I witness before the Father and the holy angels. Be thou merciful, O eternal God, and give eternal life to those who are seeking it. May their precious heart be satisfied with the goodness of God. I present them to you, Lord. They have done something just now that defied all the laws of science. They got up their seat and walk over here. They raise their hands up, show their hands up, shows there's a spirit in them moving. And that spirit that moves them has been convinced that the whole the word of God that they are wrong. Their action has proved that they recognize they're wrong and they were reverent and respect enough, respectable to come up to the altar to confess their wrong and ask for mercy. They you thou will, will no wise turn them back, Lord. Grant it, Lord Jesus, each one of them, fill them with your spirit. As I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray now for one each other. Amen. Pray for each other. God is moving. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Oh, God is moving. God is moving. He is moving. All over the earth, oh signs and wonders, while he's moving, he's moving all over the earth, oh touching Jesus is all that really matters, and your life will never be the same. There's only one way to touch Him. Just believe when you call on His name and touch in Jesus is all that really matters. And your life will never be the same. There's only one way to touch Him. Just believe when you call on His name. Let us pray. Father God, we've come to the end of the broadcast. 
you have been so good to us, Lord. I pray that the word of God that was spoken, O oh, Father, may it sink into the hearts of the people. May they know that, that Lord, uh, that we are surrounded by, Lord, enemies, O oh, Lord, and we have to get out. We have to get out. The only way to get out is through the rapture, Lord Jesus. So get your people ready. Fill them with the Holy Spirit, O oh, God. Anoint the people, Lord, with the power of the resurrection, that when they, they squeeze you from the right, when they squeeze you from the left, when they squeeze you from the north and squeeze you from the south and the front and the back there'll be nowhere else to go but we'll be looking up to you and you will rescue us lord there'll be a rapture lord there'll be a change in the body lord there'll be a manifested sons and daughters upon you oh, jesus we love you we adore you rescue your people help your people save the backslidden ones lord bring them back to you lord bring your people to you lord call unto them and bring them back to you lord i've done all that i could in my heart Oh, Father, now, Lord, let thy will be done in Jesus Christ's name. Bless them for the week. Touch them and should we meet again on Wednesday. Maybe you have me minister, play a tape, whatever it may be. Lord, you guide us in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and may you be blessed for this week. Amen. May you meditate and ponder on the word of the living God. Amen and amen and amen.